One man, Adam did, and with sin came death, and this is why all men must die, because all men sinned. But God's free gift is not like Adam's sin. Many people die because of the sin of that one man, but the grace that they received from God was much greater. Many people received God's gift of life by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ. After Adam sinned once, he was judged guilty. But the gift of God is different. God's free gift came after many sins, and the gift makes people right with God. I've seen this all before. What? You think I don't know what's going on here? I know. All too well. I told you, I've been at this point of desolation many times before. I'm sure the scenery has changed, but so what? It's a different season, but that's inconsequential. I'm a little older, a little wiser, and unfortunately for the giver, a little more mature. You see, I know all about the giver. I've seen him come in every package imaginable, in every shape and form, at the head and in the name of every promise. Blessing. Power. Eternal life. All these and more will I give to you. Unfortunately, a spade of unfulfilled promises will not mature me, will not grow me, and will not alter the simple realities of my life. This box, it may as well be empty. For whatever its contents, it can hold no tangible value or significance to me. There's an old saying, there's a little give and a little take. So what does the giver want to take from me? No gift comes without a string, an attachment, a proviso, a requirement. So what does the giver want to take from me? Will he demand more than I'm willing to give him? Will his gift come at a cost to me? What if he's not even real and I'm just riding on some emotion? I don't want to look a fool for having wasted my life on some stout belief, which when reflected upon was merely confused sentiment and my imagination. No, I cannot take hold of the gift, for it would seal my fate. For to take hold of the gift would be to give myself over to the giver, whoever that may be. That vulnerability is an end I cannot, and I will not come to. You know, it is true. It's a little give and a little take. So to the giver, I say this. Take that back, for I want none of what you have to give to me. We have been made right with God because of our faith. So we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through our faith, Christ has brought us into that blessing of God's grace that we now enjoy. And we are happy because of the hope we have of sharing God's glory. Wait a minute. I recognise that. The gifts. I've seen them many times before. Never taken hold of them myself, though. Right? Bit too much responsibility, you know. Bit too much to ask of one person, if you get my meaning. It's not that the gift isn't good, or far from it. It's not like the giver isn't generous, I mean, he supplied enough for everybody. It's just that to, to take that gift is to make a decision as I stand at a crossroads. And I've, I've been at those crossroads too many times before. 
hang it, maybe it's time, you know, just to take hold of the gift and see where the giver leads me. Uh, I've, I've dallied too long and, and debated too hard to know, to deny what I know to be true. The giver is real. His gift, it's wonderful, it, it's life-giving, it's empowering. It, it has purpose, it has direction, it has meaning. It's a fulfilment of all the promises of the giver. Take hold of that gift. To receive it and to run with it. It means I'm no longer my own. How do you give yourself over to someone like that? To, to release all control. I'm no more in control of my life than any other person. But to release and to relinquish that little grip I have remaining on things is to slip into a world I can't possibly imagine. Faith. Total and utter trust. I can reach for this box based on a knowledge of the giver that my hand will be guided solely by faith. And faith will not sway my hand this time. The gift is open, ready to receive. All the giver wants me to do is just reach in and take a hold of it. I can't accept a gift as a stranger. And that's what I am. For I've estranged myself from the giver. I chose to reject him, even when he journeyed into my darkness, to take me home safe to his light. The giver is real to me. His gift is real to all of us. The gift is before me. I don't know how to take it. I don't know how to hold it. I don't, I don't even know if I'm worthy of it. The gift is before me, but, but to reach for it is to commit. And commitment, it's not for this time. <coughs> Not for this place, but on this road. Maybe, maybe another time, uh, another place, on another road. Maybe. One man sinned, and so death ruled all people because of that one man. But now some people accept God's full grace and the great gift of being made right with him. They will surely have true life and rule through the one man, Jesus Christ. Sin once used death to rule us. But God gave people more of his grace so that grace could rule by making people right with him. And this brings life forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. What, what just happened here? Does anyone know? No. <laughs> Don't answer that. <clears throat> I've seen it all too many times before. They had the gift, didn't they? They had it right there, ready to grasp, and they chose not to. A free gift, which they left unopened. When they, when they let go of that gift, do they really know what they let go of? Surely not. To, to see the gift, to know the giver, there can be no room for doubt or denial. Sadly though, at one time or another, we've all denied the giver. For some reason, we've wrongly associated costs with a free gift. The gift is real. The giver is real. He created all of you. He created everything around you. And he just wants you to discover one thing about him. That he loves you. And this gift is the proof. 
We, can, we complain about, about finding a parking space or, or competing with the Christmas crowds. We go through so much just to get a gift. A gift. That, that representation of our love for one another. That I might hold this gift. The giver was beaten. Bruised and bloody. Whipped and tortured, he was torn apart. Nails were driven through his hands and his feet and he was hung on a tree and left to die. All this for a gift. His gift. A representation of his love for us. Take the gift. Open the gift. Use the gift. Celebrate the gift and celebrate the love of its giver. Use the gift in praise of the giver. The giver loves you. And this gift is the proof. He went through so much to, to see that gift delivered safely to your door. I'm going to have it remain unopened. Know the giver. Experience his gift to you.